Good morning, everyone. It's February the 8th, 2024. Um, I'd like to start off today by um, mentioning that um, this has um, been a, a long few days for me. Uh, we've had a lot of information coming in, and this is from the CTV National News Channel, as well as a uh, local news channel here, CTV Local News. So I just wanted to set, tell me tell people where I'm getting this information, some of the most of this information from, and of course some of it's also my opinion about what I'm hearing as well. So I'm going to end up following my notes again today uh, because it is so long; it's going to be complicated, probably a longer video. But um, I wanted to start off with uh, yesterday morning. I uh, had a meeting, and it was. Uh, this is a, a meeting that I've been attending now, starting to attend once a month. This was uh, a me meeting that we had uh, last month with the uh, ambassador from Finland and uh, the, our federal housing ministry. These are um, a series of um, discussion panels uh, being put on um, uh, uh, from the Alliance to End Homelessness in Ottawa here, which they have their own website too, as I understand, and things can be followed up on it. And um, the discussion panel yesterday morning was how to leverage community finances for affordable housing. And um, it's uh, also, uh, it's based on a community bond um, a campaign that they're uh, doing. And um, I'm just going to give you the basics of what I understand because finances are certainly not my, my thing. But um, this is what I was getting from the uh, meeting yesterday, and I'm just going to pass it on to everyone. But this can be followed on their, uh, they did um, film it again, and it can be followed on their, on their website for the Alliance to End Homeless in Ottawa. And um, how this works is, uh, for um, example, an individual can invest a minimum of, say, $1,000 into bonds for three years, uh, the next level will be $5,000 into bonds for five years. The next level will be $25,000 into bonds for seven years, and that's if you're a business or uh, someone that can actually afford that. And so they're borrowing your money for this term, and then at the end you can get uh, your investment back. And, um, and so, so this is borrowing your money up to the term of three years, five years, or seven years. Then you get your... Um, initial investment back or the option in, in reinvesting it into the program as well. And also it was to be um, spent to buy existing buildings to convert to affordable rentals or to purchase of land to buy uh, to build housing as well. Also looking at getting funding, funding from the government as well to put with the money raised through bonds uh, to buy the buildings or the land. It's a relatively new idea that has come out in about the last three years uh, and worked uh, on through the pandemic as well. Now we had two different people that were speaking, different views, doing the same thing. One is ready to launch their program this spring. The other person has been, on, um, been ongoing for about the last three years putting it together. And um, this again is uh, just another long-term plan though. To build up over time so that we can build up the housing that we need over time. Um, and uh, the other thing, um, okay, uh, is in the news now. I'm going to start with some of the news reports that um, uh, in Belleville, small uh, Ontario town here, apparently had thir 13 overdoses in one hour period, total of um, 17 to 20 overdoses in one day. And these people were dropping very quickly on the street, one right after another. They were so shocked. They were literally running around the town trying to deal with the overdoses. And um, back to Ottawa now. Ottawa, uh, from in January of this year, uh, there was uh, 22 suspected overdoses. Uh, and we also started noticing a more toxic supply of drugs. Um, uh, and this is, and the reason we were finding out the more toxic supply was it was through getting their um, drugs tested, and uh, we we're finding animal tranquilizers have been found in the street drugs. For example, a tranquilizer used on elephants 
one of the effects of this is um, the need for more wound care. People out um, are not healing as quickly as they should be healing. Uh, with the tranquilizers, the overdoses last longer. Also, the Neoxon ha uh, kit has no effect on the tranquilizers as well, so this makes things go longer. Uh, we're still losing people, so it's a very serious problem of what's being put into the drugs today. Um, and then again in Halifax, at the end of the month, they're, um, they're supposedly dismantling five homeless uh, campsites. Shelters are, and of course the thing is, is the shelters are worse than the tents. This is what they're blaming, and this is what I've been bringing up in, in my videos, earlier videos as well. And um, here in Ottawa, we are being told that the shelters are 300% over capacity for what they were intended for. Uh, 300 people a night are still sleeping on the streets. As my parents told me when I was young, you can't pack people in like sardines or you're only asking for major problems. And that is certainly being shown today. We're seeing the effects of that today. And uh, also in Ottawa, we found space in a former old age home for 18 families as well. It's been converted. They should be moving in, I think, at the end of the week. So again, this is whatever infrastructure we have, we're trying to find space for people right now, which is good, but it's only uh, a drop in the bucket. And, uh, and apparently now the government um, uh, has uh, made $99 million um, in commitment to help struggling people to pay their rent. Questions on how long this will last and um, when, uh, when does this start and how long will it go on for? Like I said, that's a big question, and um, uh, that my questions are on that is for sure. And then we've had um, an episode here of um, people talking about panhandling now, and this was um, uh, a program where people called in to see to CTV at the time about what they felt about um, finding people for panhandling, and people are very split on this uh, this one, as it is mostly directed at the homeless. If fine, um, this will affect, uh, affect them to get a place to rent, credit, and if the homeless can't pay the fine, they will be jailed. What I have seen and reported most of the panhandlers uh, pan head straight to the dealer for drugs in which it is enabling the dealers to sell, uh, to sell them and have a steady customer base at the same time. This is a very contentious issue with many discussions to come, I'm sure. Uh, because we can't stop here, we've got to just keep trying to figure things out. Okay, and um, then there was another thing that came out on the CTV National News about pot. And the long-term effects are showing up with the use of uh, marijuana, such as being uh, bent over, that is physically affecting, that, that this is physically affecting us. There seems to be a push on to legalize all these drugs. I strongly um, caution that as they're... Uh, as far as I am aware, that there has not been enough long-term studies of extended use of these drugs, either alone or mixed together as well. I know personally, I would like to see that the data collected on long-term studies. Now with tranquilizers mixed in as well, with the drugs, long-term effects could have devastating results, for example, on our fragile health care system, for one. Even Julie has um, been... Um, describing her own experiences seeing firsthand over 20 years the toll it has taken on the homeless and its results in the last couple of years of harmful things mixed in with the drugs. Example, Julie described on video how the drug dealer she had known on the streets for as long as she'd been on the streets um, showing on, on, video, on, show, on a video taken by me um, as well all hunched over due to what she believed was his long-term use as when she first met him years uh, before, he was full of life at the beginning of his drug dealing, a bit aggressive man over, year, over the years, with her down to a toothpick and could barely walk. Julie informed me that uh, she was told that he, uh, he, he had uh, 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 died about three to four months ago and a shell of uh, his former self. He was, I believe, in his 50s, never even made it to 60 years old. So that's 
alarming and uh, as I've told people um, people are even telling me they don't even think they're gonna live till 40 years old this is not good news and also um, nine months ago on April the 16th 2023 I interviewed a young mother of three small children in a motel the title of that uh, video was uh, Jameson young mother in motel on um, her uh, uh, desperate need for housing on February the 7th, 2024, she was um, re-interviewed by our CTV local news. She is now at the moment rehoused as she is afraid of losing that housing again as her rent is $2,500 a month and she is being subsidized and is afraid of losing the subsidy and being back on the sh in, in a shelter again with her three children and a fourth child on the way. Which brings back my question earlier, how long are these government subsidies going to last as we can't afford sub subsidies for everyone or forever which brings me to the question of uh, rent controls which I understand were clawed back at the end of the pandemic by the Ontario government rent could not be raised um, uh, rent could not be raised very high or people put out of the house during the pandemic it's been a free-for-all since the pandemic on both renting buying houses and high mortgage rates due to the unprecedented high inflation, which also means higher food prices as well, along with global warming, natural disasters, um, and wars breaking out. In my opinion only, uh, I feel that, it, that if the um, federal government is in some way under the authority, un, uh, under their authority, uh, could legally set rent rates for, say, bachelors, one bedrooms, two bedroom, two bedrooms, etc., at a reasonable rate and hold it there for five years before rents go back up. It would give people as well as the country a chance to breathe a little after the effects of the pandemic as well. As the landlords soaking are soaking up the benefits of huge rent increases and more people out in the streets, this would also, for five years, give a chance to start getting the shovels into the ground uh, to, to uh, catch up on affordable housing. Perhaps this is just a wishful thinking on my part, but um, this is where I'm going to leave it today. I'm going to leave you with food for thought and for some things to think about over the next couple of days before I put up another video, and I may uh, put up more on this as well. But I just wanted to thank people uh, for listening to me again, and um, definitely... I hope that uh, this will help people understand where we're at right now. It's quite serious where we're at. Uh, so I really appreciate, again, people watching, and I'm hoping this will spur on conversations with people as well as other ways that we might be able to do things. But this is just, again, my opinion today, and I'm going to leave it here because I don't want to make it any longer. So, again, everyone, have a safe have a very good day today and be aware of your surroundings and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.